Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Voice of Anatomy. Today we will see how to differentiate the vertebra. Okay, that is a cervical, thoracic and lumbar. Second, we can easily differentiate from the other vertebra. So we will know more in detail about the second. Right, but before that we will see the feature of a typical vertebra. You must know the feature of the typical vertebra. That is the all the vertebra. Okay. So first of all, uh, we will take uh, randomly one vertebra. Right now, we will forget about the cervical, lumbar, and thoracic. This is the one vertebra. Now we will see first the feature of a typical vertebra. Right. The first feature, the anteriorly it is having the wider body. Okay. So this part is a body that is facing anterior body. Feature of the body is different in the all the vertebra. We will discuss later. The body is facing anteriorly, right? It is having two surface, upper surface and lower surface, okay? And anterior and the posterior surface, okay? Now the second part in the typical vertebra that is the pedicle. The pedicle is a rounded bar of a bone that is directed backward and somewhat laterally in the vertebra from the upper part and posterior surface of a body. So this part of a vertebra is a pedicle. You can see from the above, this one is a pedicle. This one and this one. Okay. Now the third part in the typical vertebra is a lamina. So lamina is a vertical plate of a ball that is directed backward and somewhat medial from the both the pedicle on the either side okay body pedicle lamina and lamina will fuse posteriorly in the median plane now this three structure the body pedicle and the lamina will form the neural arch or a vertebral arch right and the left side the two neural arch will unite it to form the vertebral foramen right so this one is a vertebral foramen that is for uh, by the fusion of the vertebral arch, right? Okay. Now the next feature is about the processes. The first process is a transverse process. This one on the both the side, right and the left. The transverse process is directed literally from the junction of the pedicle and the lamina, literally. And in some vertebra, it is directed somewhat backwards. So this is the transverse process. The second vertebra, a second process. That is the spinous process, or you can say it as a spine of the vertebra. Both are same. The spinous process or the spine of the vertebra is directed backward from the junction of the two lamina. This is the spinous process. The third process is the superior and inferior articular process. This one, this one is superior and inferior articular process that is directed superiorly and inferiorly respectively from the junction of again pedicle and the lamina superior and the inferior articular process and in each these two process on either side both the side you will have the facet that is known as a superior articular facet and inferior articular facet if you see the direction of this facet the superior articular facet is directed more toward the back Whereas the inferior articular facet is directed toward the front. So these are the feature of the typical vertebra. Now after knowing the feature of typical vertebra, we will see how to differentiate the cervical from the thorax from the lumbar vertebra. Right? So first, uh, how will you identify the cervical vertebra? Uh, the typical feature in the cervical, all the cervical vertebra, is a present of a foramen in transverse process, which is known as a foramen transverse cerium. Foramen transverse cerium in the all the cervical vertebra, transverse process of the all the cervical vertebra. Okay, so by this foramen you can identify the cervical vertebra. Now the second thing is identify the thoracic vertebra. Now you will have the remaining the lumbar and the thoracic vertebra. 
Now, out of this, how will you differentiate the thoracic from the lumbar? You can see overall size of a thoracic vertebrae is smaller than the lumbar. First, the second, on the side of a body, on the side of the body of a thoracic vertebra, you can see now the typical cardinal feature of a thoracic vertebra is a preserved of a coastal facet for the articulation with the head of the rib on the side of the body that is present in the thoracic vertebra absent in the lumbar vertebra. And the third one, the remaining, will be a lumbar vertebra. So, the lumbar can be differentiated by the larger size. First, the absence of the foramen transversarium in the transverse process and the absence of the coastal facet on the side of a body of the body. That is the differentiating point from the thoracic and the cervical body. Now, next step. In the vertebra is to differentiate the typical from the atypical. We will start from the cervical vertebra, right? Now, first, the typical cervical vertebra that is number 3 to 6, 3, 4, 5, 6 are the typical cervical vertebra. We can identify this uh, by the two features the presence of the foramen transverse area in the transverse process and the spine is bifid. The T of the spine is a bifid. That is the feature of typical cervical vertebra. Now we will move to the atypical one, that is the first, second and the seventh number cervical vertebra. Start with the first cervical vertebra, that is also known as the atlas vertebra. Okay, now the cardinal feature of the atlas vertebra is, it is a ring shape, right? It is a ring shape. It is neither having body nor having spine and it is a ring uh, shape, that's it. Okay, now the second cervical vertebra that is also known as an axis vertebra. The typical feature of an axis vertebra is the present of odontoid process that is also known as a tens which is projecting upwards from the upper surface of the body. The present of the tens that is the typical feature of an axis or C2 vertebra. The third atypical cervical vertebra is the seventh number cervical vertebra. That is also known as a vertebra prominence because it is having a long transverse spinous process which teeth is not bifid, which teeth is not bifid. So this is a typical feature of a C sim. We will differentiate the typical thoracic vertebra from the atypical one. First we will see the feature of the typical thoracic vertebra. That is number second to eight typical thoracic vertebra. The first feature, it is having a hard shape body. If you see from the superiorly, the body is a hard shape. Second feature, the side of the body is having two demi facet. One in the upper part, one in the lower part. Two demi facet. The third feature is a full postal facet on the anterior part of the teeth of the transverse process. And the fourth one, is spine is directed downwards and backwards. Now we will see the feature of a typical thoracic vertebra that is T1, T9, T10, T11, T12. Starting, from, uh, starting with the T1 vertebra. T1 vertebra look like a C7 vertebra, but the uh, difference is a absent of the foramen transverse serial. Now the another now the main feature of the T1 is full postal facet on the side of the body above and the half demi facet on the side of the body below. Now the T9 body bra is having the single demi facet on the side of the body above. Now the T10 body bra is having the single full postal facet on the side of the body in the upper part and the postal facet on the anterior part of the teeth of the transverse process. T11 vertebra is having a single full postal facet on the upper part of the body near the pedicle, but absent of the postal facet on the anterior part of a transverse process. T12 vertebra overall look wise it is of a, like a lumbar vertebra with having a single full postal facet on the side of the body near the lower part. The transverse process is having no postal facet and in addition, it is having three tubercles, the superior, middle and inferior. Now the feature of the typical number vertebra, that is number 1 to 4 number vertebra. 
The first bit is having the largest body above the all the body. The second, the distance between the superior articular process is larger than that of the inferior articular process. Third, its spine is in the form of the quadriangular plate of a bone. The feature of the atypical lower vertebra, lower five, that is, the, we will compare the typical with the atypical and five. The distance between the superior articular process is similar to that of inferior articular process. The second, the transverse process. If you can compare, the transverse process is pyramidal in the same, in the atypical one, and it is encroaching up to the body of the vertebra. And the third, the spine of a a typical lumbar body graph is short and its teeth is rounded. If you like our video, like it, subscribe it and share with your friends.